changed in the house. Okay, I'm gonna uh, call this meeting of the ordinance subcommittee uh, to order. I believe it is uh, shortly after six. Six uh, oh, wait. Six oh, wait. Okay. Looks like all of us are here. Um, I did notice that we have minutes to approve. So uh, I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes. Okay. All those in favor? All right. All right. Okay. Um, now we do have uh, the one of the things on our agenda here tonight, since we have any public speak, is um, the food truck ordinance. And what you can see in front of you is a draft, <coughs> which I think is going to be a working draft for now. Um, but this is the first time we've actually put pen to paper here. Um, so what I did was I looked at the mobile vendor ordinance that we have currently on the books. And um, for this purpose, integrated how a food truck would fit within this ordinance. Now, we could, if we decided to, just take the food truck piece of this out. I felt like it does fit within mobile vendor. Um, so what you can see is that everything that's new is in italics. Um, so the start of this is a definition for a food truck. So a food truck shall mean any motorized vehicle with onboard power, refrigeration, food preparation facilities where food is prepared at an offsite location. And we could say prepared and served. Um, you know, it's, I guess it's just semantics. Do you, have, do you all have any feedback on that particular piece? For the definition, anything? Well, the definition of what? Am, am of the I food truck. Of, yeah, you, you're definition. welcome to, um, please. The definition We're of food truck? Informed. Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Um, <sighs> so I would recommend that rather than use the word food truck, that you use the word mobile food vendor. Okay. Because that's what the food code uses, and that's what we use down in the health department. And also, then it doesn't limit you, because in the past year, we've had... Truck, yeah. yeah, it might not be a motorized vehicle. What do you right. do with Julie Toolman who's on her bicycle on the bike path selling popsicles right. from a refrigerated, you know, little cooler? So for that, and that would fall under the mobile vendor. So I, I, I hear it, your, I hear your could. point. It could fall under the. We had to figure out what to do with Julie. Right. So um, I think that's something that we can put on here for, uh, you know, uh, as a something that we can consider here as far as semantics. Um, well, it's important because the purpose of this is so that you can identify the, the food people and separate them from the balloon people. Right. Right? And then uh, have some authority over where they're allowed to operate within the city. Right. So you might have the motorized truck, the food truck, and then you might have the people that aren't the motorized food mm -hmm. truck that could be any number of like a push mobile. Card or, yeah, that's yep, right. Push the bike card. And yep. then do you mean to I guess I'm asking the mm -hmm. committee, do you mean to also have want to have control over that group too? Because if you right. want to have control over all of them, call them mobile food vendors. Sure. And and I think um, yep, I think I think that's that's fine. Uh, I I do think that we I want to make sure that we have food truck in here. Um, because uh, all the f all the ordinances I've looked at from every other community, they they do use the word food truck but as well. They're so, limiting their capacity then. Right, and I'm and I'm fine to to keep. You're doing a better job than. Right, <laughs> I'm I'm fine to keep. I just want to make sure that there's no ambiguity about this applying to food trucks as well as mobile food. What if you said? What if you Got just it. said uh, mobile food vendor? You could define what shell mean any is. motorized vehicle or food truck with onboard power. Right. Well. So so we I, have, we do have, the good news I is. They define mobile food vendor as in the food code. Maybe we could just steal their. Uh, you know, maybe you could point to the food code and say mobile food vendor is defined as. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just find one. You could point to my code and say, mobile food vendor is any vendor so defined by the, um, you know, Massachusetts, I could give you the actual yeah, yeah, yeah. what this is. Yeah, because I mean, we do uh, make uh, reference to yeah. the um, chapter 101, section 3 of the general laws, mm -hmm. 
So there's no reason why we can't make reference to uh, yeah, the food code. Yeah, and you could say anybody who is defined as a mobile food vendor under the insert food code name uh, and licensed by the Board of Health. Right. And or, and or required to be licensed by the Board of Health, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so now, one of the things that, um, so that everything else is the same. And um, if you look at, I put in section A1, and we could say, uh, you know, mobile food, yep. whatever, um, are required to be licensed to operate in the city and must fulfill the following requirements. Mm -hmm. Now, um, uh, what I decided to do was, you can see, this actually B1 is supposed to go under A1, because this, if you look at B, that was original, and I felt like what I wanted to do, so if, I don't know if you guys can see this, but B1 is supposed to be under A1. It was just a, okay. an error there. Um, so food trucks that wish to do business with the city will fire the application with the health, health agent of the East Hampton Board of Health and will, will require a more detailed inspection before a license is granted. The application shall contain the following. And so this is where I was trying to figure, this is one of the reasons why we wanted to have you here, because I, I was thinking that if you're gonna serve food, you would probably want within their application a little bit more than name and address identification of the goods, a detailed description of the goods, their vendor license, um, their whatever, the pains of, the, that they're gonna pay taxes, and um, the plan for disposal recycling, um, which is in there. I, I figured you would want like a little bit more information. Well, remember that I have, I'm operating under this state code. Right. It tells me what I have to require in food vendors. Okay. But you can um, ask for more if you want. I could, but or I don't. We, or, well, or we. I, I do under, yeah, I can and I do, but I generally don't ask for what laws or regulations don't require because I have Why? limited authority well, to do that, right. so I, I never... I, mean, I was thinking of things, I mean, I don't see a contact. I don't do I don't, I don't, see, I don't, I don't see contact in So... Well, what I would like, do is like, take like, this all like together. Mobile numbers. You're saying health. in your regulation that they have to come to me, but they already have to come to me under another law. I mean, why are you repeating this? This isn't really, shouldn't even be in your ordinance. Well, if we're asking them to do what they're required to do within our ordinance, I, th I think that that redundancy is okay because for them to, the clarity of them, so if they're coming to East Hampton, one of the first places people will look is in the ordinances. So, and they'll say, well, we're covered under the mobile food vendor well, ordinance. Well, in fact, that's not really what happens. The first place they call is the health department. Well, that's good. And then I'm the one that always has to say to them, go to the fire department, go to the police department, find out where you can park, go to the city clerk, see if you need a state hawk, you know, if you need to, to because, they, because they do this thing. Go but, to the police department and get your hawkers and peddlers license. See, right now, we're talking about a, a three different requirements to sell a hot dog in East Hampton. Right. And I would like to make it simpler. Right. More. Well, and I don't think this is necessarily adding anything other than just clarifying the process. Well, that's a good question because um, this wasn't being enforced. Right. Which is, why, this, which is why we want to clarify the process. So if you're going to create this new ordinance, then you are going to enforce it. So they are going to need three permits. Um, if you're going to charge money for this, then they're going to they're going to have to go well, through three Well, let's keep going, processes. and you'll see that that's actually not, not true. We're going to have you. No, you're not <laughs> going to have me. I'm not going to issue. So, what, what, what we would hope to do is have it streamlined so you can issue I'm, the I'm, license. Uh, let me make it clear. I'm not going to issue your permit. Okay, I don't think it's our permit. But but it's. I think not, it's the city's permit. But I, then the city has to issue it. I, I went through this with the whole. Um, common victualler permit. I'm, I'm the health department and I enforce and issue permits under health codes okay. and environmental codes that the state gives me authority to do. I'm not going to issue everybody else's permits. Okay. So this is So if we create health regulations in the city of East Hampton, you won't enforce those? You don't create. You don't have the authority under law to create health regulations. I, I, I feel like I mean, I don't know if that's necessarily. That health well, it is. I mean, usually with state law, you're you are bound by state law, but if you want to be more restrictive or add, uh, um, you know, generally the, within the purview of the city, the city has the purview to um, add restrictions that go be above and beyond what the state already requires. Okay, but that's, tend to agree with that. Okay. That's been my understanding over a number of years. 
then oh, if well, you're going to create health regulations, you will enforce them. I can't real. I cannot enforce your regulations. I can't enforce any more regulations. That that's fine. I'm, 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 I'm not necessarily. I don't think that that's necessarily a point. So maybe we should just move on. Can Can we go back way back to the beginning? Okay. What is the point? The point is to, as we move forward with the city having more food trucks coming in, having some common sense um, regulations that are going to allow, A, a food truck who wants to come here, have a clear idea of what we expect, um, and hopefully to have a process that's relatively simple for them to get everything done that they need to get done while protecting the interests of the city. So, for example, okay, so. so making sure, you know, and, and as we move forward, you'll see kind of what I'm, you know, where we're going with this. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, looking at where they can park and for how long. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, when they're parking somewhere, are they creating a, a hazard, uh, you know, for uh, pedestrians or other vehicles, that type of thing. Um, making sure that they are giving the city the adequate information that they need to be giving to make sure they're doing their due diligence and whatever, you know, like for example, uh, making sure that they, that you, you have all the information that you need. But I already do that. I know that. I, okay. I already do that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that would be redundant. Okay. And I'm, I've always been of the ilk to make a regulation the least wordy as possible and as short as possible and to be succinct so that it's easy to understand, read, and enforce. Okay. Um, so that's why I'm asking you exactly what is it that we're, that you're trying to accomplish in this particular ordinance. Well, really, we want to fix this mobile vendor ordinance and make it include yeah. food trucks or, you know, mobile vendor. Because right now, if, if someone wants to be a mobile vendor food or not, the law of East Hampton is they have to, they are required to give these things right. um, as of now. Right. Um, and, you know, we, I feel like it would make sense for them to have to, maybe if they're selling food in East Hampton, to be, to, you know, give a little bit more information, uh, which maybe you require, and I don't know if that is you know, gets written down somewhere or if there's a form that they fill out or whatnot. Um, but, you know, I, I, I'm not tr I don't want to restrict food trucks. I want to just make sure that if 10 more come into town, right. they're not going to overwhelm us. Okay. And this hasn't been like an inqu inquisition, but I just needed to clarify for myself what is it you want to accomplish as a, you know. And yep. I think that's insightful. Because if ten more food vendor, mobile food vendors came to my door, I would permit them all. Right. And then what do we do with five hot dog vendors who want to park at the promenade? Do they? Can they? Right. Will they? Uh, so far, and when I, I saw that coming earlier this year, and especially because people said, "Oh, promenade, we want to, we want to sell hot dogs. Right. How do we sell hot dogs out there?" And I said. You know, that's a good question. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Go ask the police if you can even park there. But, you know, if you do A, B, C, and D, and E, E here, I will permit you if you, you know, pass right. the inspection and you have the credentials and all that. But I saw that coming. I said, what are we going to do if there's fights out on the promenade, you know? Yeah, between move, vendors. Move, I was here first. Can, right. can you just see it? I mean, this does happen in the larger cities right. around some of the events and special places. So uh, I think it's insightful. Sure well, that number of licenses. Well, that that's well, what that's, I, that's one of the question. notes I had was yeah. we want to have a limit to the number of licenses that we issue, which is another reason why I feel like it's important for us to look at this. Um, you know, not that we're gonna have an influx of ten more, but you know, you, it, it, you never know. Um, why people actually didn't try to park around the promenade and sell hot dogs? Is the question? Yeah. Why they didn't do it? I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, I know that you know. The last time we were uh, we revised this, I think it was in 2005, and one of the reasons why we revised it was because of the guy that was standing out at Whiskers and, and Brass Cat selling hot dogs. We oh. needed we needed to bring him, like he, you know, there was at that time it, it didn't cover him, you know, so. Well, he didn't have a motorized vehicle. He has just a cart. Right, but he was right. covered under the mobile vendor, which is why. 
So this ordinance, mobile vendor, covers hot dog carts. Because he's on the city sidewalk? Is, yes. is that part of the sidewalk his property or is no. the property? That was city property, sidewalk okay. is city property. Well, um, half of the sidewalk, I know I became aware that on Main Street, half of the sidewalk, the, the half that's, say, close so against the, the building, side, you know, to the building, half of that is their property mm -hmm. and the other half is the city property. I didn't know if that was true on every city street or just on Main Street. Every street is different. It, it depends. It's usually like a distance from the center line of the street. Right. And, um, and those are all measured in the city engineer presumably has those records. Yeah. Every street. Interesting. Um, so one of the things that is on our list to talk about is a limit of licenses. Um, what about having um, some sort of map or like a with a fill-in where the person says this is the location I would want to be? Would that be difficult for you to, as they're coming through, just having that sheet to say, okay, there's already a truck at this location? That I, I, I cannot possibly do yeah, that. It's a great idea. That, but and neither can you. It does, it's not a question that is it's yeah. Malu or he'll do. Um, because they, they move. Uh -huh. You know, they set up here and they decide, oh, I'm, I'm not selling much business here. I want to move <coughs> there. Okay. Um, it might be something as generic as saying uh, mobile vendors may not impede traffic. Uh, affect pedestrian crossways, uh, cause a nuisance, uh, cause a disturbance, you know, generic yeah. things like that. Yeah. And then if there are problems, we can say, oh, you're, you're, you're affecting the public walkway, or you're on the halfway on the sidewalk. And we actually did have that happen once. Mm -hmm. With that haunted house the first year, they arranged for this food truck to come and sell food. Common sense when I told them they were going to want to sell food. No, 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 they're not. So a week before they opened the haunted house, they finally said, you know, we are going to want to have food. Let's get a food truck. And they got this guy from I don't know where, and he calls me up and he says, I'm going to set up outside of the haunted house. I said, you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> says who? And uh, we worked it out and we permitted him, and then I went to inspect him the night that that haunted house opened. And he's got this big Mondo circus trailer big, thing that yeah, was halfway. And um, the guy that owns the button building was all upset with him. Uh, and the fire and police showed up, and they didn't like the way he was. So that's right. where we would say, no, that yeah, doesn't yeah. work here. Yeah, exactly. You, know, you can't so do this again. Actually, within, within the, the ordinance the way it existed, I mean, we do have um, you know, a, a th no mobile vendor operating on a sidewalk shall impede or impair pedestrian traffic. No mobile vendor shall conduct business in a, a public way unless there is has been a closed by order of the police for a special event. Mm -hmm. No mobile vendor shall commence or, or conduct business in any city owned properly unless the use has been previously authorized by and writing by the mayor. Now, this is where I put in oh, a okay. piece for, for food trucks or mm -hmm. mobile uh, mobile food vendor. Um, so and and this and so this is kind of an addendum to that because it says you can't do any business in the public way. Mm -hmm. But a parking space is kind of within the public way. So that's why I put this addendum in, which is uh, the, uh, you know, the parking space must be at least 200 feet from an existing food service establishment. So it can't be closer than 200 feet to a brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. uh, parking in the space does not obstruct traffic or cause dangerous blind spot for drivers or pedestrians. Mm -hmm. Parking in the spot for more than five hours without permission from the mayor's office or as part of a special event that has prior city approval. Mm -hmm. Parking in no parking zone, sidewalks in front of fire hydrants or parking in a manner that is hazarded, that is a hazard is prohibited. Mm -hmm. Parking in the mill district is permitted. However, if the mill owner does not agree to having a food truck in their building lot, the building owner can request that the food truck be parked in a certain spot at certain times. The request shall be copied to the mayor and health agent. So, um, and I think scratch and health agent, because again, I don't have you wouldn't authority. Need to, you wouldn't need to, well, I, I granted and, and you authority. I don't, and I don't, <laughs> you don't want I don't it. care <laughs> where food vendors yeah. park. I care if they're washing their hands and using gloves and if their food is fresh and all that stuff. But, right. Because um, you were already, I don't know if you knew this, but you were already an authorized agent to enforce this ordinance. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, and I... Where was that? Uh, well, it's in um, section 5.4. Oh, yeah. That was in there all the time? 5.42. Yep. That was in there the whole time. So the mayor, city clerk, health inspector, and chief of police may revoke the license issued under the provisions of section 0.538. Um, now, I added section 5.1.5, um, or I'm sorry, 5-4.41.5. 
So all East Tampa police officers, the mayor, the city clerk, and, and or the health inspector shall be authorized to enforce this ordinance within the city of East Hampton. So mm -hmm. I just, okay. I, I just um, increased that, you know, basically said this is the, these are the enforcement agents. I think that that's okay. That's what I figured. I figured. That doesn't depend on you solely to issue their no. permit under this ordinance or no. to. Uh, but it does, you know, you know police if, them under this order. if someone it just gives me authority, if I'm there and I see something wrong, and then I you can, can shut it down. Also, just like everyone else. Yep. That's re very reasonable. Okay. Um, and so, a couple of the other things that I wanted to. All right. So and now, here's the thing. You know, I think that what what I want to do is I want to make this mobile vendor ordinance get it to a place where it includes food, which it already did, but explicitly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and where it is. Uh, to the point where we can actually license them through the city, which we have not been doing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think part of that is the cost. $200 a year is pretty expensive, I would think, for someone who's coming to well, sell. Well, remember, they have to buy a hawkers and peddlers license as right. well, even if they're selling, whether one. they're selling food or balloons right. or anything right. like Once that. Once from the state. Once from the that's the hawkers and peddlers yeah, in the state, and, and they get that at the police. Yeah, and the, no, the, they no, can they get that. They the police and they get it from the state. Okay. Right, they can yeah. apply yeah. through any police department in the state and what unlike these other permits once it's issued to them they have a hawkers and permits license that's 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 for effective it. in the whole state right 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 that doesn't mean that when they go to Chicopee they still don't have to get a permit, a permit from the from them. health department right or maybe the other parts of the city if they have one of these ordinances right as well. so I'm thinking one of the things that I'm looking at here is taking this $200 fee and and putting it to a $100 um, so it would be ten dollars per day. So if someone wanted to come in for a special event and they wanted to just do that one special event and just get licensed for that, it would cost them ten bucks, which I think is reasonable. Um, you know, since this is because I think what this is after they see you or maybe before they see you, maybe part of your process is like I'm not going to sign off on your health certificate until you have the city license, or maybe the city license says I'm not going to sign off on this until you have your health inspection. What I would do is this: I would. Um I would continue to do what I've been doing, uh, which is to say to people, you know, I have a chart on my wall, I need to draw a copy of it, so because depending on what kind of food establishment you are, there are different requirements. Yep. Sometimes I have to actually look at this to remind myself what to tell people, okay. then it gets complex. So um, I, I would continue to say, you also need a hawkers and peddlers license. Do you have that? I don't have to say that, but I do it because it mm -hmm. helps people. I don't want a vendor to go out there and then get stopped by the police because he didn't know he was supposed to have this other thing. And uh, this will be similar. You know, right. I started out by saying, and you have to go upstairs and see the clerk about uh, another kind of permit. You need. Right, the city, the city. But places. it was a while before I even knew this existed. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how I was here a year or more or two mm -hmm. before I found out about this. And then when I called Barbara, she said, well, right. I don't know if we issue them or if we don't issue them because right. you already issue something and then they have to get this other thing. And that's when Barbara and I said, she said that you were all looking into it. I said, well, let's, let's just not have you issue those also until that this is figured out. And so mm -hmm. we stopped. But I would continue to say, now you need to go upstairs. And say, have you seen the clerk yet? Did you get that thing? Because you also need that thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't not issue my health permit because of that. Because... The regulation, um, the, the food code, I can't not issue a permit if they meet all the requirements, requirements. of the food code. That's right. the thing. Right. The state, the state says who I give the permit mm -hmm. to and what the conditions are, okay. and one of those conditions isn't other local regulations that may apply. Right, right. If, right. if it said that in the food code, then I'd say sure. Okay, so, I'll make so we sure would be that second. they have your permit, but urge them, make sure they have it. Uh, you know, urge, tell them how to go about getting it. Even write a little scenario for them. Here's the three things you need. No problem. I do that for everybody. This, I'm still trying to struggle with the, the purpose and the extra fee and the extra step in the process. What's well, I mean, really? <laughs> so, all the food trucks that have been in East Hampton. That have not gotten, have not paid this fee, have been in violation of the ordinance. Of the existing ordinance. Exactly. Okay. That's the issue here. We're trying We're, to clear we it up. We just haven't pursued it. We haven't. We haven't enforced this it. We haven't pursued it. Theft. Yeah. So now, if we want to. <laughs> and what happened was, I think it started when, maybe the first, mobile vendor I permitted, came back to me and said. 
I got to get yet a third permit and it costs two hundred dollars. And he said, well, "What are you talking about?" Hmm. And that's when I called Barbara and said, "What are they talking about?" Yeah. And and so now here's a way to discourage mobile vendors if you don't want them in the city, like Northampton does. They make it impossible. Mm -hmm. But um, that guy wasn't going to pay two hundred dollars to Barbara, then seventy-five dollars to me, then the two hundred or hundred dollars or whatever it is for the hawkers and peddlers permit to come sell a hot dog. And he just said, forget it. And mm -hmm. I wish I remember who that was. I don't remember. Hmm. Uh, I think maybe one or two of them in the early years I was here may have actually paid that to Barbara. Mm -hmm. And after that, she and I said, let's stop this. Now I wonder, <clears throat> so you said Until we get this sort sorted out. Your better. fee is $75 for the yeah. inspection? Um, wait a minute. It's 50. 50 The mobile dollars. vendor permit is 50 50 I mean... And that's for the permit. I wonder, I mean, like, so here's the thing. The We've had this at 200 We haven't had any, we haven't had anybody get this license, I think because it's so expensive, which just meant people were going without the license. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm almost wanting to think, like, let's bring our fee down to $50 to the same fee that, so it would cost them $100. Mm -hmm. To be to do business for a year is your how long is yours? And a hundred is that's what right. they all expect. I mean, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty not, reasonable. That's pretty reasonable. That's very fair. Um, so I'm, it's, it's annually. Now, yeah, annually. if they don't, if they come today and want a permit for the year, it's still fifty dollars, right. and it's only good to December thirty first. Okay, what January to December. Ten dollars a day with a limit of a hundred dollars per year. I mean, we could. It just um, the only. Pro I mean, that's a good idea. The only problem with that, that is if, uh, you know, say they're going to do five days. Can I suggest something? Yeah. Make it simple for yourself. Don't do a, de a $10 a day thing. Because I can see what's coming with that because I've right. been through it. Yeah, yeah. Do the $10 a day thing. The thing is going pretty well. Now they want to stay a third day. And they yeah. apply again. You've got to revise the permit. You're taking in another check. It's more stuff. For right. what? $10? Just make 50, them pay the 50 bucks. 50 is cheap enough. Yeah. Just delete the, you know, if you want to be here for a day, it's 50 bucks. And they're going to decide whether that $50 is going to be worth right. it. Right. So what if you said something like $50 for a day permit, $150 for the year? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the only thing I'm... Look at that and go, geez, all right, maybe I could come back three times, four or five times, and... I'm just not sure if this... Better off, and that would make the fee reasonable if they wanted but to... But it'd be the same thing if you charged them just 50 for the year. But it's 50... No, and it's, if they only come 50, once, fine. But it's 50 for the day, or 150 for the year. I mean, I don't know. I, As opposed to 100 for the year. Well, <sighs> look at it this because, way. Look at it this way. Or 200. A, a day permit is going to be for an event. Now, right. there are some events like cultural chaos. Cultural chaos. That is, are going to be all day events. Events in the park. But most of them are going to be two hours, three hours, four hours long. They're not going to really be a full day. So, at 10 bucks, if you were going to do a day thing, 10 bucks or 20 bucks, that's reasonable. $50, that's expensive. But that was the purpose of the day permit anyway. But I'm saying get rid of the day permit. Yeah, Charge everybody I mean, 50 bucks. If there's a day thing and they only want to come for a day, it's still 50 bucks. Yeah, no, and no. they get the permit for the rest of the they year as the well. Year. So if they want to come back, you don't have to do all this paperwork again. I mean, my only my only thought with this, with the fee, is that where it's at now has been prohibitive to the enforcement of it. Because no, uh, collecting that fee is hasn't been done because I think it's I think it might be too high. You know, I mean, it's think, well, think about if you, uh, you know, if you're going to, a food truck, you know, if they're really busy for the whole night, I'm thinking they're probably making, you know, five or $600. Guesstimate. I don't know. No, I never ask. Yeah. I always wonder. Yeah, I, want, I mean. I know this, they're doing pretty well. Yeah, they're probably doing pretty well. On a okay. good night, they do real well. Yeah, you know, for, because they Maybe say that. <laughs> yeah, you know, who knows? But if you think, I mean, who knows? I guess it would. I guess it's conjecture at this point. But um, I don't know if the point of this is to, you know, try to raise more revenue for the city. I think two hundred between fifty and two hundred, like in the city's budget, that's a drop in the hat. Well, you know what? I I think this I was know. probably created mostly because of the fireworks. Yeah, when that, do we ever have mobile vendors? So this yeah. is basically something, somebody wrote this for the fireworks, 
and they know at the fireworks the, that these hawkers and peddlers were making a lot of money. Right. And maybe that's what the two hundred dollars was about. Yeah, I mean this Dennis, was. Dennis, so of course, the, would probably know the history. Yeah, I mean, well, I was here when I know I was here when we revised it, um, but like the the genesis of it was the the fireworks. I mean, because you can see if you look at. Um, you know, one of the E, section E mm -hmm. on the, uh, the third page, it's uh, during the annual fireworks festival, sa mm -hmm. sale of aerosol powered novelties, mm -hmm. such as so called silly string poppers and similarly novelty products are expressly prohibited as a nuisance. And so, you might want to keep that. Oh, uh, yeah, I think that's fine. To I keep. would just say yeah. take out the during the annual yeah. fireworks festival and just start that paragraph with the sale of aerosol yeah. so powerful novels, such as so called string. You know, yeah. leave all the rest of it in except for during the fireworks festival. Right. Um, now, one of the other things. So uh, we we can come back to the fee. Uh, that's mm -hmm. not. I don't think that's like. Uh, yeah, you can work on that. But I, I think one of the th th um, things that I think we should look at, first of all, is if we. So what I was thinking was that you know the health agent would be, if they. I, I was, you know, I, I guess it's fine for the city clerk to issue this. Um, but that means we're going to want different information. I think the city's going to want maybe different information than you're going to ask for. You'll like create for an application form. Right. So because I think whatever it is you want to know. And I, and I think that so since this is listed on here, um, you know, one, name and address of the applicant, obviously, uh, uh, phone, uh, email, that you know, all those contact information. Right. Uh, an emergency contact. Uh, proof of insurance. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you guys think of any other one? Um, does this ordinance require them to have insurance? Well, I, I would imagine if it's a roadworthy vehicle that they would be compelled to have insurance. Well, then you don't really need proof of it, or either that or you should probably put it in the ordinance. Yeah. Usually when you're asking for anything, it's written into the ordinance or the regulation or something like that. So. Mm -hmm. Maybe you know it should say uh, all motorized vehicles must have proper insurance yep. in accordance with mass regulations. Blah blah blah. Something and like imagine that. you know I mean imagine that a food truck might have to carry a little bit extra liability insurance um, beyond well, their the normal car insurance. I would think. I mean you would think. I don't know. If they have question. they have propane tanks and they have generators and they have uh, and they're serving food. You know, if I, I'm, then I, I'll look into that a little bit more. That's one the, of the things the I'd like to look into. The food code doesn't require, the food code doesn't address liability insurance okay. except that restaurants that have more than 25 seats mm -hmm. are required to have an individual on duty at all times that's trained in choke saver, mm -hmm. which is the Heimlich maneuver. Yep. And then the restaurant is also required to have insurance for that employee. Okay. So that nobody, and if I try to save Jim from choking in a restaurant and I'm the waitress uh, and I do it wrong, I'm a Good Samaritan under the Good Samaritan law in Massachusetts and you can't sue me and take my house right. because I'm a Good Samaritan. I tried. Yeah. Um, but my employer is also required to cover me under his liability policy, cover employees that attempt to do this under their liability policy, just to cover me against the legal bills because you're going to sue me anyway. <laughs> and until they say, too bad, I was a good Samaritan, I'm still going to have legal costs. Have so so right. that's the only kind in the food code that they refer to hmm. insurance. Okay. Because they're not interested in your insurance. I think this is your comment. Because <laughs> well, I was looking at this, I'm like, did I write that? <laughs> We're in the city, the food truck hopes to be parked. We should develop a city map with spaces highlighted and numbered. That's a very think, good answer. Yeah, and, and you know, maybe that's one of the things that um, that's on the application. Where do, where do you expect to be? Because um, that way there's an idea. So that I think that we yeah, could. Yeah, I would say where do you want to set up? Yeah. That should be a question. Yeah. But and the question is when. Does the, does the, does uh, the for a moment, when? I, I buy the 150 or the $200 license for the year, and I say, gee, I'd like to set up on a cottage street. Yeah. But next week I'm thinking I'm yeah. Why don't I just say I might want to be over on Union Street? Or I might want to be over or at somewhere the else. And what do you do with the good humor and man so who just travels you, up and down yeah. all the streets? Or the yeah. person who then writes, okay, I'm going to write down every street that... Well, we're, I don't think... I don't think thinking it, of commercial streets being restricted to commercial So here's the thing. commercial business to occur. 
I think with our so other they, regulations, they wouldn't be in residential neighborhoods. But right. Uh, yeah, I mean, so like, now, now we're thinking. Okay, so somebody's going to say, well, everywhere. Well, then how does that control when and who and how yeah. and how many? I don't think it well, does. Well, the real question is, though, do we have to control need, when and who and how Well, many? if you have ten of them at once and they all want to be on but Cottage you know Street knows? by the pond when, when, we, when yeah. we put boats on the pond, yeah. there should be some sort of way to yeah. designate. Yeah, that's or, true, because you don't want, if there's ten parking spaces, you don't want food vendors to take them all up. Right. So, so I think that, yeah. that's easy. So here's the thing. I, th I think that's actually, that's believe it or not, it's with the complexity of that, it's not that, e it's not that hard to solve. Oh, okay. Great. So, let's solve it. Okay, so because um, when to set up, I think, so we already have under um, C1 some restrictions. We have a time restriction. Now, I think what we could add to that is we could add a duration restriction. So, for example, you could say, because the time restriction is a parking spot, can't be in the parking spot for more than five hours without explicit permission. Oh. Okay, so that's one thing. Now, we could say, we could add to that, you cannot be in a parking spot for consecutive days, uh, we can determine, for a certain amount of consecutive days without specific permission from, so like, let's say they want to do, let's say three consecutive days. So let's say they want to set up Friday, Saturday, Sunday for the, you know, the nighttime crowd or whatever. They could do that as long as they weren't there for more than five hours, and then, but then they would have to leave and then they could come back the next week and set up Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I mean, that's one way to control that. And I think the other way is to say that they have to be in a, par uh, a parking space, an established parking space. They can't just pull on the side of the road, because that would be mayhem. Well, that would be the simplest. I'm always looking yeah. for simplest. Because, and because I've written so many regulations in my life, I see in advance all the flaws. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, 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 I can game it. I game it as I'm writing it. And I'm saying, well, how, how are they going to game this? How are they going to twist that? How are they going to, what's, is this going to blow up in my fa face the way I wrote it? Shall instead of must, uh, those two mm -hmm. words. You right. must do this, you shall do this, you will do this, all have different meanings. And so I, I, um, I guess that's why I sound like, um, I'm not agreeing with anything, but it's just that I'm mostly, I look at this kind of stuff as a devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. That's how I read these kinds of things. So, but I think that if we added those, those caveats, I think Why it would probably just address say some of that. that they have to get permission from the police if they're not in an established parking space. Yeah, and then we could add that as simple. like a... As simple as that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, my, my, my uh, thought is that they, must they should be in a parking space you yeah, know so I think that's a good plan because then they could I mean if they wanted to park here they could they could just pull into one of these parking spaces and they're across well, then, from the yeah the we, pond. Could, we could say in the municipal building parking fine yeah you're 200 feet away already from yeah you're 200 feet away from any no issues what there. about in um, but you may not that might not be the best spot the for, well that's that's the perceived best spot. that's a special event I so, wish we had any okay. mobile vendor yeah. here to talk with you. I know. I don't he know would tell you. Are. She would tell you stuff that I. They're probably out selling. Yeah. yeah they're, <laughs> well, what they said? No, it's Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> they're usually not. I told. Yeah. I mean, we did. We did invite them because um, Matt invited all the. Because he's doing food truck Friday right. this week, I think, or next week. What's food no, truck Friday? November fourth. It's. Uh, oh, at the brewery. At the brewery. Of the breweries, yeah. Yep. Um, That's where the mobile vendors have all gone. Yeah, yeah. Because a couple of them did actually try to set up on city streets here. It's, they're not getting that business. And, and I didn't see them come back. I mean, I think Except really that they go to the breweries. I would say the only, like, really the big, the the only place outside of the mill parking lots that we're going to see food trucks is probably right here, right, right in this little. Yeah, and why haven't they? That's a good question. Maybe they are under the impression that they're not allowed to. You know. Nobody's asked me. I don't know. Maybe they feel like there's not enough foot traffic, but um, the other thing is, um, you gotta don't take for granted the food trucks. If you try to get a food truck for an event, you better book them four or five oh, yeah. in advance. They're busy. They're busy. Yeah. They're straight sure. out. I mean, they're just yeah. doing really well. Yeah. And they know where to go to get the food, and and they're not going to park around here and sell five hot dogs if they can go somewhere and sell fifty five hot dogs. So yeah, well the breweries are we're not at the fifty five hot right dog now. level yet. Yeah, <laughs> that's my guess. They're they're but doing pretty again, well over there. But this is something for the future. This is we're we're tweaking this now, or you're tweaking this now because you see what could be going on later right. as the city and the city's constantly 
growing and becoming more interesting and more people are coming and more business is coming and it's you know it's going to reach a tipping point where we'll be glad that this was in place yeah so um so i'm going to say i'm going to add to here must be in a parking space i'm going to write um you know a conse consecutive days clause so we can't because i mean really as of right now if a food vendor wanted to go set up and park in front of the pond they could do that and they could park there for any any legal amount of time that the parking space allows mm -hmm. and probably even more because you know police have other things to do push cart? so so yeah. did, do i understand that you you stopped whiskers no. from selling no we didn't stop them you didn't oh. no we just we just revised the ordinance so it um included uh mobile food vendors oh okay so um, because at the time it didn't in include mobile food vendors it was just for the fireworks so that was the, in 2005. so the two things are push carts the two things that have come up this year is the push cart hot dog thing mm -hmm. and the second is julie toolman who the bike. sells on the bike in the, the cooler and the popsicles it turns out that first we said to her well you're a mobile food vendor because she was going to ride up and down the bike path mm -hmm. Yeah, what else to call it? We didn't right. know what kind of food establishment she was. Right. Then after that, we said, "No, no, you're a temporary food vendor," because we changed it three times. Wow. Finally, what'd you settle on? Well, we settled on the Department of Public Health called me and said, "Jackie, she's a frozen dessert manufacturer." I said, "Oh, she is." <laughs> and that That's and, right. and frozen dessert manufacturers <laughs> are allowed to ride their bikes down the bike. <laughs> well. <laughs> A frozen dessert manufacturer doesn't need an additional permit to sell her ice cream. Oh, you don't need a permit to no, sell it. Oh, she doesn't need any. She doesn't need a mobile vendor right. permit. She doesn't need a temporary food vendor permit. So we said to Julie, rip up those two permits we gave you. We're not charging you any more money. But we're making you a mobile. You are a frozen dessert manufacturer. That's too funny. And of course, I'm familiar with that whole set of regulations called frozen dessert manufacturing regulations, but they usually apply only to people who are extruding ice cream out of a soft serve machine. Right. The Tasty Top is a frozen dessert manufacturer. McDonald's and Burger King are, mm -hmm. the, are frozen. And the extra requirement for them is that they have their milk tested every month. Samples go to a lab. Oh, and they test them for bacteria content. How about Mel Tom's? Or are they, they hard scoop so they don't... They're hard scoop so they don't so have they're to different. follow that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, although frozen he is technically a frozen de so dessert manufacturer okay. also. But the ones that I've been most... Uh, familiar with were the extruded ice cream right. and uh, and the milk test. I did I see I did see a mobile cupcake vendor. So in East Hampton? Uh, I can't remember if it was in East Hampton or not. Was it at the uh, farmers market? No. It might have been somewhere else, but that's coming down the line. Yeah. Well cupcakes are the, the you know Yeah they're in. They're the new brownie. Yeah. So <laughs> mobile cupcake Vendor. It still tastes like cupcakes, though. Yeah. It's not special, though. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, so, okay. Let me let me just see if there's anything else on here that... Um, what do you guys think about that the mill wording that I put in there? I didn't really... Like, I want to give the mill owners a little bit of control, but oh, I don't... I was going to ask you about that. I don't want to give them total control, well, necessarily. Um, what is, what Figured it would be a... Control what is the mill thing? Because when I read that, I said, what? Over there. Parking. No. No. Where's no, the because building? Because of its oh, closet. That's yeah. E. So let me ask you, whose property am I parked on if I'm uh, mm. an ice cream truck? That's, <laughs> uh, that's a good question. In the mill isn't district. It? Am I on city property or am I on mill property? You're in the ether zone. You're in neither. You're well, do you have does probably the city mill? Have a probably a, a deed to mill property. My guess. So a deed to mill property. However, a easement an easement granted by to the city yes for the purpose of developing the parking lot and being and able for to it. use the parking lot oh is that why the public can use that even though it's private property yes. i pu i puzzled over that myself no. a little there were millions of dollars they they, they have what well, yeah. right yeah. mill owners have we a lease spend to it. money to, to develop their their, 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 so their private they're property they're going to give it back right. got it okay right. so so I wanted to give, and, I, and I'm, I, this was just something that, you know, we've, we've kind of gone back and forth on this, but I figured, and, and this is by no means, this is a rough draft of oh, yeah. the, this thought, but the thought is, if a mill owner has a problem with a food truck parking on, in front of their mill, um, then they can request 
that and and, and uh, that that food truck be parked at a certain spot at certain times, you know, um, and that would be copied oh. to the uh, city clerk. That, 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 that would scare that, that would scare I, me. I, I don't know if that would be enforceable or passed. I, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know. A, lit, a litmus test. So we need to figure this out because this is the I one think area we could that, say we, that trucks can park here. We could say trucks can park here. I think it's the and mill owner's property, and it, they have the sole control over whether they can, they'll have a food truck on their property, just like I, I can have one in my driveway for a party or not. Yeah, I don't know, though, well, because it's know, a park, because, it's yeah. public parking, those spaces are public parking spaces. Oh, they are? Yes. So the mill owners don't have any authority they ha so over they ha who uses those parking spaces? So I think, uh, so they I haven't seen a final out version. They can't go get out of that parking space? I haven't seen a final version of the easement because I don't think it's been filed yet. I think that they have control over some of the spaces. And then they don't have control over others and we don't know which ones those are yet. Why don't you just delete that whole thing and just wait and see if there's a problem? Well, yeah, there's... Because that kind of confuses kind of it. That's just a recommendation. I mean, I'm not on your committee or anything. Yeah. I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but that's kind of a red flag. And I just don't know what it else. It just makes people think about something. Why even think about it if it's not a problem? Uh, one of the mill owners has already brought it up. Oh, okay. Then it is a problem. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. So that's why we're talking about it. Okay. Now, now I get it. <laughs> so here's the, I mean, here's the, uh, you know, I don't even know how to approach this one. I just know that that's where they are all going. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't necessarily know. I mean, it, do they need to get permission from the mill owners? How about parking in the mill district may be permitted with owner with men? So, so here's, right. here's, 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 the, here's the crux. So you have a tenant in the mill who's having the food truck come. They like want, a they residential want, tenant? Uh, no. No, no. Like, like the like brewery. brewery. Like the brewery. Yeah. They want the food well, truck. Well, they're doing that. It's they're, right. They're it's that like the mill right. owner says, yeah. I don't necessarily like the way the food truck looks. It, it looks kind of shabby maybe. Oh, really? So oh. it, this is bringing our Oh, so that Mike Nishan that must be saying that. Because only Mike would say that. Maybe. Yeah. Well, because he has a really <laughs> high-end place. But yes, he does. And I think that that would only be Mike that would say that. Yeah. So, um, so but which food truck looks shabby? I, I mean, uh, it's, like, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, because then, and I'm not even going to get well, into the... I think the, food, food trucks in and of themselves are shabby. Kind no of. how pretty they look. I, um, they're awful. Geez, but I, then I, I, I love to look at them from the planet. But then, <laughs> but then at the end of the day, it's yeah, kind of like that just slipped the brass, out. The one that was parked at the brass cat. I thought Mothership the Gourmet. Food is, is a lot. M Mothership Gourmet. Do you, Mothership know, do you know who that chef is? He's a professional chef. Do you know who he chefed for most recently? No. Bill Cosby. Oh really? Oh, he that's was his first chef. Really? Wow. Um, I, mean, I, I guess that's why he's on a food truck. He, le he left, Sharp, he left good Cosby's looking. employ and decided to go out on his own, his own and he thing. wanted to do a food truck. Huh? Um, yeah, he's doing a pretty good job. Classic I mean, he seems to be pretty busy. Yeah, is he? Is oh, yeah. He, is Mothership he down is, there at the He's at the, the mills brewery? almost every weekend. Oh, good. I'm glad that yeah. he's doing all right. Well, I the, knew he would because yeah. people would appreciate his food. Yeah. Yeah. Would the number of feet away from the from the building satisfy the mill owner who... And if I haven't heard you're any saying if you're saying you know you have to be well you have to be 200 feet from any building no 200 no, no. feet from any restaurant restaurant you said restaurant what if should there be a building I don't see I don't know that might be that Close that's going to get tough far for the building so you're, here's the you're, thing you're, you're you're being symbiotic with the actually brewery. they want to be right outside that they're right outside the brewery should it be 200 feet from any food establishment well or building well it is that's what it is right now is and any you know, any food inside mill 180. I don't the know. The community food engine is a food establishment. Right. Did you go to their opening? Yes. I don't, I don't know if frankly, I couldn't uh, go that can actually say. Isn't that impressive? Two or three feet. That's pretty cool. From a food establishment. I don't know if, that's a, if that would pass muster. Uh, I've seen it. I've seen it in uh, almost it like, so almost yeah. all the, almost, almost all of the um, larger city food ordinances Believe that me, I've read. Believe me, it makes sense have to that. me oh, right. they have, yeah. as public policy. Is it too restrictive on business? So, can I give you a corollary to that? A in public health, a lot of times the little boards of health in these small towns, these hill towns, they don't like this or they don't like that. So they say, well, we're the board of health. We can do anything. We can make any kind of law. So we're going to make a law so they do. that right. prohibits this. Uh, usually they're talking about 
of setbacks or provisions around septic systems or wells. And they're trying to limit development, as right. an example. Or they're trying to they're trying to do things that boards of health weren't really put in place to do. Let's just put that one. So there's a provision in in somewhere in the law, and I think it might have to do with environmental only, but it says when you're a board of health and you make that kind of a regulation, if it's not backed by science, you're gonna lose the first time a contractor comes along and challenges it. Years ago, in one of those communities where they had some of these most ridiculous regulations, right. I was at a party and talking to a contractor, and he was telling me about the ridiculous regulations in that town, and I said, they can't do that. And I started telling him why, and I said, but that's not even backed by science. In fact, just the contrary, and I went on and on and on. But you know, about six months later, that guy sued the Board of Health and won. And they had to, they had to throw that ordinance, uh, throw that regulation out, because it wasn't, it was just a made up thing that they were trying to limit development in that little town. So um, the corollary here is, is there something in municipal law that says when you create an ordinance, you can't create an ordinance for a special interest, in this case, the restaurants. Mm -hmm. Well, is, um, is that how that seems? So there is a... Or, or is it our duty, in fact, as a city to protect our business interests? So we can't, we can't really protect, I mean, so here's the thing. Uh, what we can do is we can, we can make a, a, a common sense regulation that, that is not necessarily protective but not not going to be harmful okay. to you know if we if we allow a food truck to pull in in front of a a, a brick and mortar and that could be harmful that could be a harmful it's regulation econom it's economic it's so, economically right harmful but the commerce clause restaurant. does not allow us to protect specific industry just to protect them um, so but we can have common sense regulations that you know, are going to put a buffer between, um, just like we don't necessarily want s seven liquor stores in a row. Right. You know, we can create common sense, and that's not because but we want, don't want them to that's zoning. Right. Um, but you know, with this within the ordinance, we can m make reasonable um, guidelines that are going to um, enhance the quality of life for the citizens of East Hampton. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily in the trying to protect anything but trying to make things you know run a little bit more smoothly um, hence the what the parking space in front of the pond right one designated space mm -hmm. that would be made available mm -hmm. the, the pr parking on commercial lots we're not touching I mean, if, you, if, if, if somebody has a, a commercial site and they want to bring in a food truck and the food truck wants to have a relationship and an arrangement with that property owner mm -hmm. on commercial property Go ahead. Mm. That's I, up to them. You used a term I liked, and something just came to me. What if you define Synergy in your goal. ordinance something called special designated sites, which are A, parking spots, spots and are specifically designed, uh, defined, like for instance, there will be one special designated site, site at the uh, pond. Fun. There will be right. one special designated site behind Mill 180 or mm. whatever. You know, and in, in certain places, like there'll be one designated special spot on Main Street. Right, and those are called, those are. And you'd say, notwithstanding that a special event where there's a big fair or festival, you know, that, that this does not apply. Right. You find a way to write that. So, so th that that's what we, that's where we were, and, and we call them catch zones. Okay, oh, I love that. Um, and, you know, I think we're still there, we just haven't defined them yet. Um, and I, and I didn't know if, as we were looking at these um, other regulations, you know, if we needed to do catch zones still. Mm -hmm. But I think that that's something that, you know, we've talked about in the past, and I'm fine to keep on the table, but it would just mean that we would have to have a map attached to the ordinance that designated the catch zones. You know, so what we would do is probably identify three parking spaces behind Mill 180. And uh, you know a certain number of parking spaces behind the other mill buildings, as because you never know. I mean, who knows what's going to happen? I don't. I haven't heard anything about the dispensary, but if that comes in and that is, um, you know, has a retail component and there's has a lot of bit traffic going in and out of there, someone might want to set up a food truck there. 
you know. They, they've already joked about selling, um, who joked Cookies? about setting up, yeah, like a little Munchies? cookie shop right out, yeah, right yeah. outside the dispensary. Yeah. Uh, and I remember saying, oh, my well, man, you get great. Well, in Colorado, in Colorado, the, the Girl Scouts what? were sending out tables in front of the place. That's that, where I heard yeah. that. That's where I heard that. And they were making tons of money. Yeah, that was very smart. <laughs> they made tons of money. And it, maybe it was, I don't know, if, I think it was probably after that was on the news that yeah. Julie Tuman and I talked about that when I was inspecting her kitchen. She's in the building where the dispensary's going to be. Oh, is that the new space, the new um, uh, event space? The, at the Keystone building? She's in the she's in the Sulco building. Okay. You know, yeah, yeah, Sulco yeah. is right next door to Keystone. 122. Um, yeah, so yeah. so you go in that door. She's not far from that door, but upstairs. And, it's and so if you were going to come to the dispensary through that door, yeah. which I don't I don't know. I think, I think it's from the back. It's just from the back. Mostly for the back because they didn't want people crossing the street yeah. and becoming. Well, they're going to have a commercial kitchen in there, too, I think. I mean, if it happens, I don't even know if they've gotten approved. Well, when we talked, we talked around the table, they came in and met with all the city departments. And I don't really have any authority over or interest in this particular operation. Mm -hmm. And it's all Department of Public Health, not local level that, yeah. that authorizes right. this. And, um, but then they said, they, then they started talking about maybe even making edibles with uh, THC in it or yep. something. And then I said, what, wait, wait a minute, edibles? Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't do that. Then you're going to need a kitchen, so you better talk to them about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so It'll have to any be kitchen a that they make has to be, be a you know. full-scale commercial kitchen, I imagine. Well, I don't know how full-scale. It depends on what they want to make, but yeah. they have to submit a plan for me, to yep. me for approval because if they're going to make food. So uh, Julie is, uh, what is, what kind of kitchen does she have, though, over there? Is it? She has a full-scale commercial kitchen to make popsicles. Popsicles. And she has a blast freezer, and she has a three-bin sink, and she has a beautiful commercial floor. She's got stainless steel oh, cool. workspaces. And so full-on popsicle. Yeah. Frozen <laughs> dessert. I think frozen. she's kind of insane, but she's okay. creative. I, you know, the go. last time I criticized somebody, <laughs> he turned out to be a millionaire. So oh, there I stopped, you go. I stopped saying that's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> if want to go into the food business. And that was Bart's ice cream. Oh, Bart's, oh, yeah, they did well. Yeah, he did really well. And I told him that years later, I said, you know when you first opened that store in the middle of winter? Yeah. Selling ice cream? He drove by and I said, look how stupid that is. Was it Bonducci's so before stupid it was Bart's? Like, <laughs> so. so, yeah, catch zones are something that we've been talked about. I just did, I didn't put it into this draft just because I didn't have a map. Mm -hmm. Um... But that's, I think you, you, and I was kind of like rushing through, so I didn't write it out. But that's that's something that I'm, it doesn't make sense to keep that in there. I think to, to designate those spaces, it makes it easier at least. I think it does. I mean, I think then you have to look at first come first serve or a plan to sign up for the space. All right. What that's if um, what if a car is just in there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What if a car? The sign would say designated. It would be an extra parking space, I would think, mm -hmm. or an add-on, maybe an add-on parking space. We say designated food truck zone. Yeah, yeah it would cost money though. Uh, Fifty dollars for a sign. I maybe know. I don't know. Every time I've, we were doing stop signs, the police were like, or I the know, DPW all, says we don't all, have money. They all get cranked over. <laughs> over the, but so all right, so want, you want to park in all let's over figure the, all it out. The city? I mean, and but the thing uh, is, is like, uh, I just don't, I don't know. Let's let's. Catch zones. I'll, I'll add it in, um, and we'll see. We'll see. I think that's really where you get your yeah practical setup of where people should be. Yeah, yeah I mean I agree with that. So we'll uh, and and, we, and then we'll just you know it does. And you, then you don't even have to have the 200 feet. Because the catch zone is in the parking space. You can park right. in a public mm -hmm. parking lot or in the catch zone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the mission. So we could we could make this whole parking lot a catch zone. We may, any municipal except for we probably that one's too small. The one that's next to Whiskers. It's a small parking That's too small. Lot. That's a reasonable. I think that's maybe a reasonable way of controlling. Yeah. yeah. Um, because and then the middle parking lots, we can just say, you know, we could ask Mike, hey, Mike, can we designate the first three spaces in front of uh, New City as mobile food catch zone? And he'd probably be fine with that. You know, at least from what I think. I think he just wants to have a little bit of control. Like, I don't, I don't think, and it hasn't gotten to this point, but I, I just don't think he wants it to be like, 
you know, a food truck Friday in front of New City where nobody can park now. Right. You know, New City right. does it right. They close off the entire half of the parking lot. Mm -hmm. They clo And so what they have is they have the food trucks making one boundary, and they have the whole thing taped in. And oh, they have really? the, they have a little entrance, and they use the entire half of the parking lot on I, their side. I want to go down and look at that. When do they do that? Friday. Uh, Friday? Food truck. It's Friday, November fourth. That's why I've never seen it. It was on a Friday. Friday, I November fourth. Um, All right. So, any other things we want to knock I, off I this one? I was looking to see what the food code uses for a uh, definition in the regulation of mobile food vendor. And interestingly, they got definitions for everything: vending machines, uh, but not mobile food service animals, temporary food establishments. Nothing for mobile food. They don't define. I never really noticed that before. Hmm. They got a section on mobile food vendors, but they don't have a definition on one. I that's bet that's not a, uh, an accident. I bet they found it too complex. Mm -hmm. uh, this is probably they, why all these major cities have like really complex ordinances that talk, like spell out everything from you yeah. know like the, where the this uh, where they get their food prepared and I mean they go through all these really they don't have to do that because that's already in the food code I don't know the I don't know the food code already, already says each of these operate each of these mobile food vendors by the way has to have a base of operation that is a fixed kitchen right. that is permitted by a local board of health right. health department and inspected Mm -hmm. So uh, you can't just buy a food truck and right. go out and sell food. Right. But so you have to have a place to prepare. You have to have are a place where you're storing your are, food. Are you aware of where this is? Oh, for yes, the very, absolutely. For the various ones? Absolutely, Would you yeah. share that with us? Oh, sure. Where they're located? Yeah, yeah. I don't think any are East Hampton based, though. I don't right? think any are East Hampton based. Um, are they? Because I feel like most, like, um, no, Mothership might be Northampton. Because yeah. we would like to be East Hampton. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. That would be well, wonderful. Well, here, here's how they work. Some of them like... Um, <laughs> well, the popsicles are used to have to base. The, yeah, she's the only one. But she's uh, she's not a mobile food vendor, remember? Right, right. Um, the ca not Casa Latina. Um, I know who you're talking the, about. The Mexican guy. Uh, yes, uh, from Amherst. Yeah. Now, uh, he's out of Amherst because he owns the restaurant. Here. Yes, so Mission Cantina. Mission Cantina. So sometimes you get restaurant owners that also buy mobile food vendors. Right. Um, and they Rips use their restaurant. Another, Rips is another yep. one, Myers Eatery. Log Cabin. And the Log Cabin is a third. Mm -hmm. But the others, what they do is they buy a mobile food unit. Maybe they used to work in a kitchen. Now they mm -hmm. want to be a mobile food vendor. And they don't own a restaurant. So they go to a restaurant or to the American Legion or mm -hmm. to a church, church kitchen yeah. or something like that. And they say, I want to rent your space. Mm -hmm. And they store their refrigerated food in their kitchen. They wash their dishes in their three-bin sink. They, they use their facility. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure I can make a list of those for you. You want me to send you a list? Sure. Somebody? Yeah. Who do I send it to and, and where? And well, send send it to it. That's a list of all the kitchens in East Hampton? Yeah. Well, yeah, JP. Mm -hmm. All the kitchens? JP in East Hampton. Somewhere on this. JP. Oh, constable. Yeah. Um, it just didn't uh, that, fit with the it was that was one of the original words that was in here that we just never took out. Yeah, that would be my one. I, I think. No, no. I'll make where, it. Where, 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 so like the mayor can take it away, but the mayor can't demand it. If if it's in the state, unless the tax goes to the state. I don't even know if we have a constable in Mars. The meals tax. Oh, it would be in the city oh, that they were. that's a good question. I don't know how that part works at all. I don't involve myself. It goes to the community where the food is prepared. It's, it's where, yeah. That's my understanding. Yeah, yeah. Not where well, they sell it. That does make sense. Yeah. Because how are you going to keep track of how many hot dogs you sold in Holyoke versus right. Chickabee versus? If you do, yeah. that, that kind of makes sense, but it leaves constable. If you're coming here to do all this business and then there's no meals tax. Yeah, so I, that's a really good question. Yeah. yeah. Like, so if the fellow lives in Southampton, but he's really using uh, Riff's Kitchen in East Hampton, mm -hmm. right? Who is he paying the meals tax? Well, the meals tax goes to the Department of Revenue. The meals tax goes to the Department of Revenue, but it's assigned. I believe it's assigned to where the food is prepared. Yeah. So, so for example, say so say Mission Cantina is being prepared, prepared. So in Amherst. So that goes back to us. 
No, I don't think we're paying anything. If it's repaired in South in, in, in Amherst, it goes to Amherst. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. You just said it went to the DOR. It goes to the Department of Revenue, who then sends it, I believe, back to, to the Amherst. community. Oh. Back to Amherst. Oh, so that's one better. of the problems we're with food trucks. Is not that the whole sales tax, but the portion, that portion of meals, that the, the extra the meals tax oh. that we all pay. Got it. Comes back to the community. Uh, I did not want to. Yeah. So that's one of the bummers. And, you know, and we, we do say that, uh, you know, we have in here a statement pursuant to General Laws Chapter 62C, 49A, signed under the pains and penalties of perjury that the applicant will be responsible for and pay all applicable taxes for all goods sold. <laughs> but, I mean, that's one of the things I had asked Barbara. I think that's a good thing to put in here. You know, if, if, really, it makes sense for the local community where the food is sold for that tax to go back to that where the food is sold. But I feel like that might be burdensome on the food truck operator. I don't know. I think it would be burdensome, but but it seems right. My way of viewing the world world is this. Yeah, it's burdensome, so they just wouldn't do it. Right. <laughs> or they'd lie. And yeah. Who's going to catch them? Yeah, like, no. Who's got time to chase that around? And it's who does that? Not a lot of money. We don't know. Well, if the, if it's the ice percentage cream, that's going to the state anyway right. is a significant percentage. Yeah. Well, it'd be interesting. That's, I mean, that's another thing that we can kind of investigate. I don't know, I don't know exactly how we would figure it out. Well, if you were saying they're making $500 a day, they have to have sales. Are you thinking sales or profit of $500 a day? Well, probably no profit. Profit, I'm thinking, profit is, I'm thinking, I don't know what they're you're profit. thinking profit. I was thinking You're profit. thinking profit per day, so the sales have to be probably five times that or more. Um, to well, make Jim, a profit. all you have to do is Three go times. to the park when they're having the Scottish Festival. Yeah. I, I stand there and I look at those four food trucks. It's the same four or five food trucks every year. I go to that festival all the time. And I stand there and I just start running the numbers. Yeah. I, I do, because you're standing in line forever. So I look at the menu. I'm like, this is eight ninety five. That's seven ninety five. So does four ninety five. You count the people. And I count the people. And I go, and 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 see, this has been a half an hour. Yeah, I play that little game in my yeah. head. It's thousands and thousands. Yeah, well, I mean, think about it. So festival. it's hundreds and hundreds of dollars of tax every day. Yeah, so you think, you think you think like a you probably know, a food truck could I, mean, to, I don't know any food it could truck, be a hundred dollars. I don't know. I have never I seen a food truck with a cash register. Going. Never. <laughs> oh, they d I, I've seen the cash register. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you see a cash drawer. I have never inspected a food uh, food truck that had a cash register in it or any electronic means of. Well, you always them. hand your money to the guy. He does something and he hands you the change. Oh, that's you, not you, right. You've got to figure at least <laughs> half of that goes somewhere that that's the government right. never well, I sees. Think, I think it's a cash oh. business. That's why it's lucrative. Well, now they have now they the now they have like iPads and now they take credit cards. Okay. So that that changes things a little bit. So yeah, that's interesting. Bit. But I mean, so anyway, we have a draft. I, I feel like we have some good information to go on. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll just, you know, I'll make some of these changes. We'll come back, and we'll take a draft a little bit. In the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll, we'll take a look at this draft and, and start, like, you know, working off of it. At least we have something to work off of now. Um, so, and then we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, and I don't know, did you have anything on plastic bags? Yes. Okay. What do we got? So you're done with me? We're done, thank uh, you. Unless you're interested in plastic bags. I think I am. But I don't so know. Feel I'll free to stay. We always enjoy your... seconds, maybe. <laughs> enjoy your input. Listen to see what everyone has to say about plastic bags. Okay, so we had talked about um, doing the survey this week, but before um, before we even went to the survey, there were a couple of other things that I really thought that we needed to get some more clarification on. Um, so at the top, when we first started looking at this, I had created kind of a spectrum of choices that we had, ranging from no ban at all to banning all plastic bags and all businesses, um, and what were the other things that could go on. Last meeting, we had talked about the possibility of having a charge per bag mm -hmm. and um, what it would take to to implement that. And I wanted to talk about some of the best practices that other cities have used and things that I think we should consider. And I think this also really addresses the feedback that we got in our forums. So the first one, um, because the environment tends to be a social class issue where um, 
you'll see people with higher degrees of income and higher degrees of education pushing a lot more for these types of laws. I think it would be uh, hoove us to have some protections in there. So I wanted to bring up the possibility of if someone is in the store using food stamps or using WIC or any other public assistance, that they would be exempt from the bag fee. Mm -hmm. um, and the same thing with senior citizens. Um, it's two possibilities, just because the, any, I remember when we brought up the whole override possibility in East Hampton, and that was the biggest pushback, was mm -hmm. that we have vulnerable groups in East Hampton, and how will they deal with that? Um, we haven't really talked about store size or the quantity of the product that they're selling restrictions, whether or not we would want to put any sort of restrictions with that. A lot of the other cities avoided the whole restaurant issues and plastic bags for takeout food by just exempting them from the mm -hmm. whole ordinance. Mm -hmm. And because it was the restaurant industry, that was the only, um, the, the loudest voice in that about concern. I figured if we put that in as an exemption, it would kind of take care of that issue. Mm -hmm. um, but it, or you word it in such a way that it would say, uh, retail stores, right? But then, which then restaurants like, aren't retail stores. Yeah. But if you look at a place like um, Orchard Hill, they have some things that they sell that are prepared foods, and then they have some things that would be like cookbooks or mm -hmm. or little folk crafts. They have nothing to do with that. So I think if it was a mixed use, where it was a restaurant that sold other goods, we would have to consider whether or not we would want to make it for, well, since you sell food, period, and, and your first designation is as a restaurant, you're exempt, or would we say if it's a non-food item, they have to do that? That's just a decision we would need to make. Well, if you look at the convenience stores, they sell food and other items. That's different, though. That's a real estate. That That's different in terms of the um, prepared to go foods versus foods for sale that you'd find at a convenience store. Maybe if they had like, you know how, I, I don't know if they have this in East Hampton. Which is but yeah, okay, so like 7-Eleven right. has suddenly like all these food products that they're making on mm -hmm. site. That would not be, they, they could put that in plastic to go if it was something like that. So but food if, prepared. But if you went in to buy batteries, they couldn't put it in plastic? Right. That's, that's confusing for the consumer. Right, which is why I'm bringing it up. Today. Right, so we can just, just yeah. kind of think about that. Mm -hmm. Food prepared on site versus food not prepared on site. If you have food prepared on site, prepackaged products, or would we want to just say that's just for restaurants and not for retail? Well, certainly, I think we all tended to agree that if there wasn't some sort of restriction on plastic bags, that they'd be limited to limited or not, not to be non not inclusive of restaurants. We do not include restaurants. Okay. So how would that go for a store that's really a store but suddenly is upping what they're providing? I think I think a, a, we we should look at primary um, primary whose primary purpose. business is a restaurant? Yeah. So you know for like Amy's place exempt. Seven Eleven not exempt. Mm -hmm. What did they do in Northampton? Banned all plastic single use bags. No matter across what the you board. were, who you were. Across the board. So um, so they had to switch to paper. Which Which sucks, by the way. Yeah, we so know. That's that, why we're not that within the really banner. Really yeah. makes me remember to bring in those big plastic candle bags. Which is the my which truck is kind and of not point. forget them. <laughs> right? Yeah. But, which was the point. <laughs> which it, 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 works. So it works. It works. It's, mm -hmm. Over time it's working but, better um, better for me. But you know, we also have heard a lot of feedback that you know some people do really rely on these things so you know we're trying to find ways to incentivize mm -hmm. bringing the, those big bags in well and you know what incentivized me as a consumer the fact that they were big roomy handled well made mm -hmm. durable plastic bags mm -hmm. so durable I use them at home for my recyclables like mm -hmm. the cans and they get yucked up I throw them in a washer and they, they yeah. you can wash them yeah mm -hmm. so they're that durable for a dollar. Right, I know, it's cheap. I That's know. what, I have about 20 of them in my truck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, so really we were actually, like, one of the things we were talking oh, about yeah. was partnering They're with really ECA, ECA Plus to have East Hampton 
themed mm -hmm. bags made that could be sold at different retailers so, uh, that were made by artists in East Hampton. So that's one of the things that's on our... <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kind of like Bear Fest, but with bags. I found... I'm going to go. Speaking okay. of that, thanks for letting me speak up where yep. I didn't no have any right to. That's fine. <laughs> I'm going to go and leave right. you yeah. so you sharing. can really do your work. Now. Take care. Thanks Thank for inviting me. Thank you. I appreciate having some input. Yeah. Bye-bye. So in Seattle, in, in retail establishments, the city created these stickers, like a bumper sticker, uh -huh. um, where it has the city logo in the corner, and then here's our plastic bag band, and mm -hmm. just a reminder on city doors. So I think having yeah. that competition with that kind of signage would be really... This is what I wrote before. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like with that, I, I agree. I think that a sign should, we should have a sign that the city creates mm -hmm. that is that, that is mandated to be posted at all the stores that give out plastic bags. Another thing that they did was they had, this is, sorry, I don't have this printed. But okay. this was just like, here's the law, and it was a front and back Like page. a flyer, yeah. And I was thinking, you know, if we if we could raise the funds for it, it would be great to be able to put that into the um, summit. Mm-hmm. And so people were actually getting notification of this. So combination of the summit newspaper and then on the doors of businesses within East Hampton that, you know, this is, this is what's going That's on. cool. That's really cool. I mean, uh, if we had... You know, and I think that yeah, Seattle must have a um, waste management. Mm -hmm. And I think this really calls for that committee as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. So while we're talking about the committee, just for a moment, may I say we've all talked about this for a very long time, mm -hmm. and yeah. we're getting. I know I'm getting more knowledgeable on the subject. Mm -hmm. I think we're sharing ideas. I think. We're pretty much headed in the same direction. Mm -hmm. There are three people at this table. There were four who came to the meeting, two or three were opposed, and mm -hmm. a number were in favor. I still think we don't have that critical mass to move forward that we all talked about before. I think uh -huh. you brought that up. Do we need to really have a critical mass in the group? Mm -hmm. And it, I, it almost seems to me like I don't want to wait for the group. But I don't want to. Mm -hmm. I don't want to move forward prematurely to have everything kind of uh, not be successful because we haven't. We don't have the buy-in from everyone. So my what I'm going to bring out and put on the table is the idea that I talked about before about the sign on the door or the sign at the point of sale. Remember, mm -hmm. we talked about we should have a sign East Hampton. Mm -hmm. strongly encourages the use of reusable uh, cloth bags, reusable uh, compostable bags, whatever we want to say. Mm -hmm. To say, East Stanton is, as a city is behind this, and this is our first salvo, our first step mm -hmm. toward awakening the public to this idea in general. Set up the groups that will coordinate how we proceed. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to wait. I want to put those signs up and have everybody say, you know, like right. on, on the doors that say, did you bring your plastic bag today? <laughs> or, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, did you bring your, 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 your clean cloth bags or your clean whatever, we, however we want to word it, so that everyone starts thinking about every time they approach a point of sale uh -huh. where plastic bags are used, that they're thinking about it. Okay, go ahead. And I... And I I'm thinking that maybe be just before that we should have a survey to tell us how many people are using the, the single-use bags so mm -hmm. that we can tell whether or not the, the first step... The businesses or the, the citizens? How, much, how, many, how many bags are, we, are, are getting distributed and thrown out into the world to landfills, to wherever they go, mm -hmm. uh, that we want to reduce mm -hmm. so that we can say, geez, yeah, right now our sense is that there are... 100,000 plastic bags a year in the state, mm -hmm. 200,000. And if we can reduce that amount, that's our goal, I think, by having people think about sustainability mm -hmm. of how we utilize our resources. I so, think, yeah, I agree. What do you guys think? I agree with that. I think that when it comes to survey research, it, the norm is to have a real low um, response rate. 
So to be able to put a number as to how many bags we're actually doing in East Hampton, I don't know that it can be a mailed survey or I'm not thinking of mailed survey. I'm thinking you go out and you, you know, randomly sample the, mm -hmm. the stores that you're thinking are using. I don't know if we have enough. I honestly don't know if we have enough of a retail store base to make that statistically significant as a as a random sample. Maybe, I don't know if we'll be able to do that. Maybe it's not all that important. Yeah. I just it would be nice at the end to say, geez, this is reduced. East Hampton mm -hmm. has reduced the use of single-use plastic bags by fifty percent. Mm -hmm. So we can. And this is what we did and how we did it. Now, if we wanted to go from fifty percent reduction to eighty percent reduction or seventy percent mm -hmm. without imposing a ban, mm -hmm. we think we need these steps. We think we know what our goals are and what our current usage is okay so so let me just get um so you're what you're suggesting is an ordinance that would um mandate posting of a sign of a message to the public and that would in remind all, people oh geez i left, forgot my bag in the car let me go in back all out. retail facilities mm -hmm. before i get into the store get my stuff and i say oh shoot i forgot my bag so where would we want it so and so, I mean, it would. Point, I'm, I'm thinking at the point of entry would be the most logical place. So we'd have to be. mandate that it would be placed at the point of entry, and so the ordinance would say state uh, all retail all retail establishments in the city of East Hampton that uh, use single use three point three mil plastic bags uh, are required to post the following message on their point of entry. Boom, point message. Uh, the city of East Hampton encourages uh, all patrons to use recyclable bags. Something. Like it's in a really short way. I'm mean, think we, if we think about it, we can think of a short. So state. and so, who who do we who pays for the sign? Do we pay for it? Does the city? I mean, Practical so, problem. I, mean, I don't, I don't yeah. think they'd be expensive. They'd be small. They'd be like little stickers. They're right. probably going to cost. Bucks or something. Right. I don't. I don't think. I'm thinking of little stickers, right? Put on. Maybe it's attractive. They might. But I don't think it'd be. Similar attractive. to that sticker that you had. Uh -huh. I mean. Kind of, kind of like a, the, a, the logo we're going to be see, working I feel, with maybe later. I mean, I'm fine. I'm fine with that. But I feel like you know, if we're going to write an ordinance for this, I feel like writing an ordinance for a store to put a sticker on the door. Doesn't necessarily have the impact. I don't like I'm almost like I agree. I agree with I'm, I'm almost like the their stores probably have a sticker that says that anyway. A lot of them probably do. I've never seen one. I feel like I have, but I could have imagined it. <laughs> so a lot of other cities do that as like a three-phase implementation process, where the first year there's no penalty for not doing it, but there's a public. Um, just public awareness. awareness and a campaign to really do that and I think we could say our first step is going to be a campaign and to do this campaign we've um, created a committee we've created a contest for a logo and we've met with the mayor and the ECA plus person and whoever else needs to do that not needs to be on that and then we had talked about um, Earth Day being the day that we start implementing more than what we would, you know, so up until that day, it would be more about, okay, guys, this is going to be happening, so here's what we should be looking for, and then after that, we could have, okay, now we're really getting serious. If you still are not bringing your bags on your own, even though we're giving all this extra stuff, now the next incentive is that the bags will still be available, but you'll have to pay a fee for them, um, and then we could even phase it out that Next year there on Earth Day, we won't allow those plastic bags there at may all. Be a, there may be a ban, right. And so if we were to write the ordinance out that way that had those stalled steps into it, that would allow, if people wanted to get more involved in it, they could apply to join the committee. Um, and if people were, all of the other complaints that we've gotten have really been kind of focused on, we're not demanding only one type of bag because we've heard from different people and the research shows that there's pros and cons to all of them. Where we're putting protections in for vulnerable people within East Hampton. We're giving the businesses a pretty long timeline to be able to comply 
and we're also creating a funding stream in the long run to keep this sustainable mm -hmm. over time. In phase three. Phase two, phase three. Or, yeah, phase two would be the money um, that would be generated, and then phase three would be, okay, now you're not allowed to have any plastic bags, and at that time... Because we don't seem to be reducing uh, the right. use of, of the or, single but, use. But bag. then the state will probably have already banned them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, so here's what I was thinking. I, I like I like this. Pro I like the pronged approach. Approach, mm -hmm. but I, and but I feel like the sign and the recycling bins could go hand in hand. Okay. Like I don't see that, why that I don't sense. see why the you know saying hey listen you're you give out these single use plastic bags now you have to have a place for people to bring them back and you, you know um, and, and you now you have to put up with a sign to try and encourage people to bring their own. Like I feel like that could be phase one, and phase two could be like now it's a ten cent fee for mm -hmm. each bag that's collected, and we still haven't decided where that money goes yet, though. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, does it go to the business owner to offset the cost of you know recycling? Many, these I, I've seen or? many of the communities that, that split, split, split it five five cents to the business and five cents to some other purpose right. related to the product. like a a, a a a donation account for you know that is specifically. Uh, for recycling efforts and uh, and making signs and yeah. stuff in East Hampton, right? That, that it, could be. It could also be to help um, new businesses or financially failing businesses to help defray those costs. Mm -hmm. So that five cents that we get, I mean, we could. Yeah. So that's something that you know maybe mm -hmm. we could. All right. I'm, I mean, I think this is. A, I think we're at a good place here. And so maybe we should start looking at verbiage. Yes. Let me get through a couple more sure. things first. The guy who came in who has the farmer's market down the road saying that he needs those bags. Yeah. I was thinking about all of the other farmer's markets that I see in town, Pepin Farm, Haber's Farm, they all use used bags. Mm -hmm. It looks like those families probably save those bags up all year. So I'm not so concerned about that, mm -mm. that That's a one reuse. Re retailer. Um, and plus that's seasonal and it's not like large scale. Right. You know, it's not like mm -hmm. CVS giving, you buy and a pack of gum and you get a bag. Right. So, um, I think we should consider food vending trucks. I put the food vending trucks in case we decided that the bags for prepared food would not be exempt from that. That, well, then does that mean the food trucks right. wouldn't? So mm -hmm. I guess that's a non-issue if we're just going to mm -hmm. exempt the restaurants. Yeah. Um, should any types of businesses be exempt from the ordinance? And I was thinking, like, the East Hampton Community Center, Parsons Closet, Cancer Connection, we have at least those three three entities within East Hampton that are, I don't know if any money is <coughs> handed at the East Hampton Community Center. Well, I was going to say, but the, I, I have a feeling they're probably not. Are they buying single-use plastic bags to give their stuff out? East Hampton Community Center? I don't think so, but I was thinking we could encourage businesses to donate, donate their bags their to them. Bags to these businesses that are yeah. relying on the public. Yeah. So that, I mean, I think that could be a pretty easy, con especially if we're requiring so people the, to the, the have community recycling. center. I think would be exempt in any case because it's not a point of sale. Right. Sure. Right. Okay. I just wasn't sure right. if they were. If or not, Parsons so. Closet is a point of sale, mm -hmm. I don't know what their square footage is. I guess it's just that because That may be they're one way to begin to be look at the square footage and say, gee, they're 250, okay, let's we'll start at 300. But I guess for Parsons Because Carson's I don't think closet, they're using, a, I don't think there are a lot of sales there. No. But the, the whole purpose of Parsons Closet is for people who can't afford. Can't afford it, right. So I think that's what I was going, like the Cancer Connection, 100% of their profits are going to. Uh, right. There's got to be some business designation for that type of so business. So you could call it non a non-profit, non -profit. but then I'm not I sure. All non no. I, I, I would neither. Okay. And you would have to think about that again. But uh, what other non-profits are point of sale? What other non-profits are point of sale that would use bags? Cub Scouts? Nothing. See, I don't like, I don't think, I She's a hard pressed to think they of one. Something unpleasant. <laughs> the Girl Scouts said, "I'm outside." They use plastic no plastic bags, bags Girl Scouts. <laughs> but they I don't know. They're just going to be taken straight to the box. The box is getting straight open. They don't want a bag. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, I, I agree that those. I agree that those businesses should be exempt. So. Okay. 
I just think that comes back to your other question to JP about how are we responding to the public and providing their input. And I think if we, all of those things are addressing all of the issues that the public brought forth. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that we really, that I'm not seeing is more of a, I think we need to have one meeting with Mo. Um, mm -hmm. yep. Because we don't have the input from the business community yet. And that was the other part. I'm the questions that I have for the the survey really were more asking, would you support this or not? Mm -hmm. And I thought, why are we asking that? Right. If we're going to be doing this anyway, I don't know that I want to be no. giving them the false impression that we're going to make our decision on this based yeah. whether or not they like it. Right. So I didn't want to put those questions into a survey per se, but I did want to give an opportunity for feedback. So. What a lot of communities have done is when, you know, like a six month out or a one year out survey to ask how significant the change has been as a result of it. Mm -hmm. All right, so, and then the other question that I had was, I just, and this I think is the part where the committee would be really helpful. I'm just not sure how to find out who all the local suppliers are and that I guess would be the one thing for bags. like. If businesses, it, it's often said that businesses don't, cities don't move forward on this because the businesses say they don't have the time to do the research about cost <coughs> comparisons. Mm -hmm. And so one really helpful thing is when the city holds a number of, of forums where they invite different local vendors in to show them the products and to have that comparison there. Are you talking about plastic bags? Yeah. And maybe that's not I'm necessary. Not, I'm not, I'm not sure, I'm not sure you're going to get there. I'm not sure it's necessary. Mm -hmm. I did a search since our last meeting on plastic bags and where they're sold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are places in Massachusetts that make plastic bags and Hudson uh -huh. Bass is a major manufacturer. Okay. Uh, I didn't identify anyone in our community. Mm -hmm. I don't think there is anyone. I don't think there is anyone in our county. I don't think there's anyone else in this. There are a lot of people who manufacture plastic products, a lot of oh, yeah. products, which is a whole nother, another set and it's a, another issue. But let's stick to the plastic bags. I don't mm -hmm. think we have anybody local. In terms of yeah. finding out what the costs are, mm -hmm. usually the sites had costs for a quote. Mm. Really what they How much? They it's get. probably based yeah. on volume. I'm, it, based on volume, and we'll give you a quote. Right. So I wasn't quite sure how to proceed. Okay. It would be interesting. You know, I bet yeah. you. I bet if you. If we invite them in here, I think it would be kind of. That's, yeah. that's, no, that's fine. I bet that a lot of places have that information. You know how much they've paid for the, price right. the businesses. What? How many? Maybe how many they've ordered? Out yeah. Informally, over the next couple of weeks to find out. But then, you know, I mean. Although it is election day coming up, so there may be a lot of demands out of people's time. Yeah. yeah. But you voted. But Did vote. <laughs> there may be other activities. That you know, yeah. Okay, so in terms of actually penning out ordinance, mm -hmm. I've never done that. Okay. Um, so I'm not even sure where I would start, and I would be happy to, to try my hand at that, but I don't know if you usually follow a template. Mm -hmm. Or if you... Well, it depends on what the ordinance is. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, you, like, you know, generally what I try to do is I try to find something that's already in existence. Okay. And then, and then find, you know, like, off find one that meets, is closer to meeting our needs and then start tweaking that and make it, you know, for this I took what was in there, mm -hmm. what was in our ordinance and just started tweaking it. Okay. Um, you know, I think maybe Northampton's would be a place to start, mm -hmm. you know, and look at, and then you just like to get their verbiage. Yeah. And then instead of like looking at a band saying, you know, if there, it's a point, what is it, point three a millimeter plastic bag would um, require businesses to, um, provide a receptacle for the deposit um, for recycling of on premises. And then those have to be recycled properly. And then they have to be recycled properly or donated to, uh, you know, uh, like the community center or something. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I mean, just take a stab at it, and then we can we can wordsmith it uh, mm -hmm. as we go and, and try to find something. So we'd be uh, talking about an ordinance for phase one. I would say phase one should be uh, some sort of mandated signage. And and the um, 
receptacle exactly. for yeah. mm -hmm. for deposit. And then there can be a larger discussion in the community. Yeah, because that'll start people something. People want to be in the group. Yeah. Right. That, right. Um, that'll at least get people talking, and then we'll be like, well, phase two is, you know, each bag is going to cost a certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and this is what we would use that money for, and these are the people that would be exempted. So we'll and we'll work on that language as well. Okay. And um, you know, we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Well, that's productive. We've been here for an hour and forty-five minutes. So. Yeah. Um, Let's uh, do have a motion. Right. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor. Okay. Seven forty-three. Uh, did you bring your?